Welcome back. We are continuing our series on prophetic words for 2024, where I connect with prophetic friends whose voices I trust, and they share with you what they're hearing is coming from the Lord in 2024. And today I get to share with you one of my favorite people to co-labor with, one of my favorite people to work with, someone I count not only as a dear friend, but I consider one of the most trustworthy and accurate voices in the body of Christ in this hour. And he's got a word he's going to share with you to give you vision for 2024, all about how there's a war, there's a roar, and there is more coming in 2024. Let me bring him in without any further delay. Joseph Z, my friend, how are you? Robert, it is a privilege to be on your broadcast, your program with you. And I want to say hello to your audience and thank you for supporting my friend, Robert. I, I highly value our friendship, who you are to the body of Christ. And I am very honored to be with you today. Thank you for having me. Thank you, my friend. I know how busy you are and all the great kingdom works you're up to. So thanks for taking time to connect with us. And just before we started recording, we were visiting and you were saying, yes, I do have a word for 2024. It's about the war, the roar and more. And I got all excited because as our audience knows, I've been sharing about how God spoke to me and said, there's spoils of war in 2024. And he's Man. giving us faith to believe for more in 2024. And then you said, yeah, I have this word. It's war, roar and more in 24. And I was like, come on, so <laughs> let me turn this over to you. I, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. I know the audience is the same. So I'm going to switch our view here and then I'm going to swap over to you and you take it away and you do what you share, however you feel to share. I may jump in and we'll interact, but I want to hear about the war, roar and more in 2024. Okay, Robert, what a privilege to be with you. You know, um, in, I'd say over the last two years, I kept hearing this word and it was this word micro wins and not like wins that blow across the horizon. I'm talking about little victories, wins. I kept seeing micro wins that would accumulate into a roar. And these little winds would continue to happen, continue to happen until suddenly there was a mighty roar. And the Lord began to minister to me saying that the roar is coming in 24. And I believe the roar represents a revival. I believe it represents a pushback, the remnant, the uh, reformers that will stand up and begin to speak back against all of this nefarious wickedness we're experiencing on a global scale. We can sense the spirit of Antichrist just pressing the culture, but there's this roar, this standing up against it on a spiritual plane. Um, the war, this word, the war, is something that has been very intense because uh, we both have a mutual brother, uh, Brother Alan DiDio, and, uh, and Alan is preaching, and he and I are in a meeting together, and I know you and Alan have done stuff together and so powerful, but I'm, I'm watching Alan and I had this word about this war, this war. And Alan stands up and he says, we are going to have war in 24. You know how articulate he gets and prophetic. And he starts to release this. And the Spirit of the Lord said, that's it. There's a roar and a war in 24. And I, I just fell into this prophetic word. And I realized that is where we're headed with World War III type of things, this whole narrative. And then the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me just, just recently. And I only say these things when I truly hear them. Because I think we can be in danger of, you know, just taking things further than we should. But in this particular case, I actually heard the words more. And as you said in the beginning, it's the war, the roar, and more. And I really like what you said, Robert, about 24, there's going to be the spoils of the war. That's the exact same word God's giving me by the word more. Because more... I believe represents those who have been faithful. They've been standing up. They're not being intimidated. They're being bold. They're driving forward to whom much is given, much is required, but to whom is faithful with what they've been given. Even the one who has not been faithful, whatever they have will be given to the one who's been faithful. I see that coming in 24. I believe there's, there's an involvement where there's going to be a yoke busting anointing for people, no matter what happens uh, financially to the system, no matter what happens to the institutions, no matter what happens. In, and I believe we are right now in a cold World War III. I believe it's cold. It's a little bit quiet, even though you can tell things are really happening. I believe it could go to a hot war involving a number of things. Back in September 16th of this year, 2023, in September 16th, I woke up from sleeping and I was about to preach in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Robert, I woke up and as I did, 
the Spirit of the Lord woke me up and I didn't wake up in Tulsa. In the Spirit, I woke up in Las Vegas, Nevada. And as I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, I began to have this encounter and the Spirit of the Lord spoke something to me and he said, what is happening in Vegas will not stay in Vegas. And so then he spoke a part two to me to this same word, but I'll share the first one. The, part, the first part was, I go live and I broadcast on September 16th. The Lord is saying what is happening in Vegas will not stay in Vegas and all of this. And people started commenting, "You don't you know what's happening in Vegas? And the truth is I had to kind of grapple for it. And I found out they were under a cyber attack in Vegas and the Lord showed me what was happening there would not stay there. And that's going to be something I believe we deal with as part of the war in 24 because they didn't deal with the issue. They basically gave them blood money. They took care of it that way. And the issue kind of went to the wayside and they sort of appeased these cyber terrorists that were attacking Vegas. So that happened. And then right on the heels of that same word, the spirit of the Lord began to minister to me and said these words, September 16th, the same moment, he said, Israel will march and it will march against their enemies. Now, this is three weeks before the conflict broke out between Israel and Hamas and all of that narrative. And when this happened, the Lord said to me, it would be an unprecedented decision for them and a new precedent for the world. And now wherever that conflict goes, we can, we can see where it's headed, where it's been. But I believe very clearly that is a milestone because three weeks later that broke out and the Lord began to minister to me saying, if we don't see dramatic change, we're going to see what would be considered a form of World War III coming into this next year. And I do believe, however, that the righteous are going to prevail I see it like light and darkness at the same time rising and the righteous will overcome in the middle of a present evil world. Uh, Robert, I like to say it this way. It was dark in Egypt, but it was light in Goshen. And I see a number of things for the coming year and we can get into that, but that's the gist. That's kind of the headliner for what I see. I see things taking place that way. Outstanding. You know, um, as our audience knows, I've been prophesying since 5784, since Rosh Hashanah in September of 2023. Powerful. There'll be spoils of war in 2024. And on, hearing on. this, one of the things that I like to share with people is when we hear there's war, because one of the first things God highlighted to me is there will be more warfare in 2024. Now, you've been prophesying and actually predicted, as you said, or didn't predict, but prophesied that even there would be wars breaking out in nations like what's going on in yeah. Israel right now. Right. The Lord was speaking to me about more spiritual warfare needed in 2024. And that when we Come hear on. we're in a warfare season, not to get this, oh, poor me attitude of, oh, more warfare, more resistance, but to <laughs> remember that as the people of God, when he ordains a season of warfare, it's not about resisting the enemy or pushing back against the enemy. It's about taking territory in the spirit and in the world. And we've been crying out for years now, at least three to four years now, oh God, use me. Oh God, use me to change my nation. Oh God, use me to change the church. Oh God, use me to bring righteousness back into this world. That's right. So we said, great, I've got a people willing to go to war. So war in 2024, everybody, challenging, heartbreaking, but opportunity, especially when we look at not just the wars in the natural, but the war in the spirit behind it all. We had actually released, I don't know if you recall this, Joseph, but when the war in Israel broke out, I had texted you and said, hey, right. would you That's be okay right. if I release a snippet of that word for you? Because this morning in prayer, God gave me a prayer strategy for the leaders of Israel. So and powerful, Robert. You were so yes. gracious. You let us put that out. People watched and responded. But again, the warfare seasons are seasons of opportunity for the body of Christ. And that even your word about war and roar, I hear yeah. roar and I think, okay, that's the roar of the line of the tribe of Judah. That's right. That means we're going to live in, give place to, give voice to the victory that we have in Christ, which is part of the opportunity. So don't hear war in 2024 and think, oh man, yes, that also means world wars. Or, or wars in the world and nations in conflict. But remember, 
We not only have the solution in Christ, partnered with him, we are the solution in Christ. So don't let the enemy piggyback on this and tell you, oh man, more warfare. I want you to be like a Joshua. I want you to be like a Caleb. I want you to be of a different spirit and realize the wars you've had in your family, the wars you've had in your relationships, your finances, your church, your workplace, your nation, your businesses. This is the opportunity Come on. to advance, take territory and see victory. So do me a favor. As I turn this back over to Joseph, start posting in the comments where yes. you are going to see the victory, where you've hoped Amen. to see the victory, but now you have faith. I'm going to see the victory in my Come marriage, on. in my finances, with my prodigal. Start posting because we're going to be looking at that. We're going to be praying and decreeing in agreement with you that the That's war, right. the roar, and the more in 24 is coming to you and you're going to collect the spoils. Man, I, I want to make a comment about this too. You know, those of you who are watching Robert and you're, you're here with us right now, I, I want to say thank you to you because Robert is one of the most trusted prophetic people. You know, I, I was just sharing with him and I'm going to go into some points here in a minute, but I was just sharing with Robert that some of the words he shared with me in a very, uh, how can I say, a precarious and sensitive and yet very Holy Ghost manner really helped me navigate a season that was um that could have been really difficult and challenging beyond words but robert's words encouraged me what i should do and i just want to say those of you who are supporting him this is a prophetic voice that you know that i really trust and have benefited from and so thank you for being here and again like he's saying comment shout out man this is what we're believing for because when you stand with a true prophetic ministry you get that prophetic reward i guarantee you if you're with robert here's what's going to happen you're going to see axe heads floating which means borrowed goods going to get paid for it or return you're going to see return you're going to see breakthrough you're going to see good things happening your oil jars won't run out let me go into let me go into some more of this here i um i've had some encounters over the last several years and one of the things that the lord really really spoke to me about was early on in 2020 and robert i had a very powerful vision all the way back then, which I believe is applied to where we are now. I had two encounters. Now, I'm not one of these guys that has an encounter every five minutes. I don't have them constantly. I sense things like you do, Robert, constantly, but I don't, I don't have these dramatic, prophetic, you know, <laughs> angelic visitations. But I did have a vision right after the election in 2020. And I'm not all just about the election, but I got to say God is speaking to our present circumstances. During the 2020 scenario, right on the heels of that, I woke up one morning and had a vision, like a day vision, and I was caught up and I saw this because when you're talking about the roar and the lion, I had a vision of a lion, a majestic, powerful lion, and he was perched over the earth and he was looking down at the earth. He was gazing down. People were crying out, why isn't he doing something? Why isn't he acting? Why isn't he acting? And... Um, I was looking at him and I, I remember this, his eyes were like crystal. They were so clear. And I try not to get emotional when I say this because they were, I don't know how to say it any, any better, but the spirit of the Lord said to me, the lion is watching and he is holy. That's what he said to me. And the lion was gazing down at the earth. And I began to say, why isn't he moving? What's happening? And the Lord s spoke to me and said, it's for an appointed moment, an appointed time that there will be action and the lion will roar and the lion will move, and his eyes were holy, and I began to see that. And the Lord spoke to me and said, there's an accumulation of people's prayers. They've been heard. There's times and seasons. They've been heard. The days and sacrifices are accumulating, and it's not like we're earning God's action here. But I saw this, and then the Lord showed me in 2020 how all the people cried out, said, oh God, save America, save the land, do this. And during that same time, the Lord said, I heard the prayers. I heard them. And then I heard these words that justice will come, but people who've cried out for justice don't understand what that's going to take. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke to me during that time and said, the reason the lion did not act instantly is because it would affect everybody. It's going to affect the righteous and the unrighteous. And there is a time now of justice coming because the prayers have gone up before the Lord and they will not be returned void. And the Lord is going to pour out justice, but the rain is going to fall on the just and the unjust alike. But the good news is, going back to this word of more or how the Lord's going to give you spoils of war, we're going to outrun our enemies in the rain, just like Elijah did when the rain fell and he and he girded up his, his, uh, his outfit and he began to run towards the city. He outran his enemy, Ahab. 
He outran him to the city. And that's a word of the Lord. The rain fell on both of them, but that's what's going to happen. And this rain is coming. The justice of God is coming to this nation and many nations, and it's going to impact everybody. And so that's part of that, that scenario. And then at the same time in 2020, Robert, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, but an angelic visitor came, spoke to me, and I've only had this once in my life, and this happened to this level. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord, the great God Jehovah, does not need you as much today, but he needs you, and this is before all these events, he needs you after the 2020 election, and then you're going to really be needed, and he's going to request your service. And I was like, okay, <laughs> uh, put me in, coach. I'll do whatever you want. And so that began to happen, and that set the precedent for things. And now I believe all those elements, those, those pieces that, that are accumulating. And uh, in 2015, I stood in Trump Tower, and the Lord said to me, America has one more round because the young lions are coming. I believe between that the lion I saw, the Lord needing us after the 2020 election, and the accumulation of micro winds that accumulate into a roar. I believe will accumulate. All these things are coming. And 2024 is the staging ground. It's the beachhead. It's the trailhead of where we're beginning this new journey. And the new journey begins in 24, Robert. That's what I see. And so uh, in that same narrative, I'm seeing um, this uh, year of land. When you talk about Robert, the Lord is going to begin to give spoils. One of the specific words I see is people that have been withheld in land, land inheritances, property ownership, things like this. There's something special about this because there is a currency that will involve land later. And those that are owners of property are going to have a special positioning when this whole thing starts to change. And I see that being a form of wealth transfer. And when we use the word wealth transfer, we're not talking about gumdrops and rainbows will fall from heaven, brothers and sisters, and you'll be so wealthy, you won't know what to do with it. Well, God's not a wasteful leader. <laughs> God's going to position you to have exactly what you need to get the mission done. And yes, richly enjoy your life. But when I'm talking about wealth transfer, I'm talking about God positioning you to be ready to function in the age to come, in the days ahead. And I believe part of that is going to be this year of land. You're going to begin mm -hmm. to see paid land, sold land, acquired land for the kingdom. And some of you, and here's the word of the Lord to many of your viewers, Robert, which I love so much. Your program is amazing. I see many people that were supposed to get real estate. They were supposed to finish off a house mm -hmm. and somehow it was interrupted. It was railroaded. It was pulled away from them. It was an inheritance. It was a parental, a grandparent thing. There was a lot of scenarios that were supposed to come to you. And suddenly what took place is it was almost like it was hijacked or stolen. But the word of the Lord is this, delay is not denial. You're going to see a miraculous turnaround. Many of these properties are coming back into the hands of the righteous. They're coming to you. An inheritance is not stolen. It's coming around the mountain again. It's going to come around the bend and it's going to come to you. I sense this for many of you during this time. Robert's word is accurate. And the word is the spoils of war. We're going to receive spoils in 24. And I'm very excited about that, Robert. Yeah. And you know, I, I could feel a couple of you as you heard that word, because you've been through so much, a couple of you were wrestling because you made this decision, especially in family situations of inheritance and land, and you made a godly righteous decision. Let there Amen. be no strife in our midst. And you made the right decision at the right time, but don't confuse that right decision at the right time with this right word right now. What Joseph is speaking is for you as well. And here's the scriptural promise one of them you can declare over yourself grab hold of genesis 28 15 which is the lord declaring to you that he will not cease until he finishes bringing you into all that he has promised including this land and this inheritance so continue to watch over your heart well done you faithful servant that you did but don't let go of this opportunity this is not embracing strife this is not embracing war with family this is you embracing a word from the lord that a trusted prophet joseph z has brought and now simply agree with it and you can go to war with the truth of genesis 28 15 while continuing to have peace in your midst with family members you don't have to strive you don't have to contend agree and declare and for those of you who just got super excited about this word <laughs> grab hold of it 
start Take declaring it. Genesis 28, 15 and Deuteronomy 28. There's a promise you can declare that God is going to bring you into the land that he has promised you and bless you there. That's your house. That's your land. That's your inheritance. That's a good word, Joseph. Thank you. Oh, I love it. I love it. So I, I Robert, if you don't mind, I'm going to share some things that are a little more maybe controversial, but I don't think they're that controversial today. Go uh, for it. We can just, we can just look at them. Okay. Um, one of the things that came out and it was a prophetic word we gave. And I know you've had a lot of dialogue on these type of same issues and you do it so eloquently. Um, but one of the issues that I saw coming out and I, I felt it was going to come out sooner than it did. And then it didn't, but then it did ultimately come out is this, and I hate saying this, but this UFO alien narrative, um, this is going to become another thing that circles back around. And Robert, I'm just going to be really clear. There's no such thing as aliens. There's no such thing as these creatures and all that. There is nefarious demonic characters that cloak themselves as these or it's government uh, technology or it's what people call Project Blue Beam or whatever. It's, it's a mix of that one, the other or all of them at the same time. The point being is I sense very clearly a great end time deception that's going to continue to be marshaled forward until the point, and I believe we're going to see another step with this, take a, a powerful step again in 24, where when they need a good distraction again, suddenly you're going to hear more about the alien narrative, more clear images, more disclosure, until ultimately you see religious institutions beginning to talk about it at a higher level and beginning to say, well, we just got to accept that there's much more going on here than where we are. And ultimately the agenda of that the end game is to get people to believe we were seated here That's by right. aliens, not by God. And it is an antichrist last day's deception. But we are going to see more things in the heavens. We're going to see real things. People are going to photograph them. They're going to videotape them, whether they're projected, whether they're real, whether it's actual demonic entities you're looking at or a combination of it. What we do know is, number one, it's a deception. And secondly, we've got to be prepared for it because there's a lot of believers. I saw a video recently, Robert, of people that were watching the skies and there were video beams or not video beams excuse me light beams blasting around in the sky and people are like they're angels dancing they're angels dancing and i'm i i'll tell you what if i saw angels dancing i would be singing and celebrating but that's not what this was it was a bizarre thing and there's so many people that so desire to see the sensational that they're missing the spirit mm. And, and this is something that I'm very concerned of, and it, and it involves this UFO alien narrative. And that also leads into another point that I think will gain more and more traction, and that's this climate change narrative, which I believe is a, a religion. It's becoming a religion. And the Spirit of the Lord has been really pressing me on this, saying, tell people about this, because the climate change narrative, I believe they want to push believers to bow the knee like the the three Hebrew boys were forced to almost do in Babylon to this, this idol that says, this is the, the thing we need to worship. This is what is reality. And I believe they are doing this to marshal us into what I've seen as climate lockdowns and marshal us into these digital prisons, so to speak. And, uh, you know, 15 minute cities and all this mess they're trying to work towards all in the name of save the environment. Let's get everybody, you know, this, let's recycle our sandals or something. And at the end of the day, well, here's what we got to realize is that yes, there might be cyclic changes in the atmosphere. There might be things happening, but here's what I want to say. We've got to stick with the gospel and we got to stay clear eyed and clear minded. And the hope I have is for viewers like you who are watching Robert's program, that you will rise up in faith and say, Hey, not on my watch. I'm not going to be uh, swept away into this deception. And even as your children go down these avenues, you need to begin to contend with that and say, no, we don't believe that the Bible says this. And you're so into the word of God that even if your eyes were to see a deception in the sky, or if you saw stuff around you, or if you get these agendas pushed at you, you will not go down that avenue. And so I, I just have a, I have a great concern for that. Um, another word that I'm concerned about with this coming season, and I actually did a live broadcast on it, Robert, recently, where I was, I was in the, about to go to sleep and it kept coming over me about there is a deception of conspiracies. And Christians you know, and I did this in a meeting and Robert, you can probably relate to this. I was in a meeting and I went to the whiteboard and the Holy Spirit said, call out the demon of conspiracies. 
I was like, okay, because you know, Isaiah says, do not say a conspiracy as they say a conspiracy. Now we know there's a lot of conspiracies that have been proven true. There's a lot of factual things that are true, and I'm not dismissing that at all. I talk about conspiracies nearly every day on my program, but we never land on them. We come to the word of God and we tell people, here's the answer. But the point is, is that there's a demon of conspiracy that's trying to get on the culture and is trying to get on a younger generation. And it doesn't matter. You pick your conspiracy, whatever it is, and people are getting their faith hijacked. Even if they have factual data with something that could be accurate and true, they're getting factual data, but it's beginning to hijack their faith and remove the very purpose of why God gave them a believer. They're using their believer to believe crazy stuff or even accurate stuff, and they're losing the connection connection between that and the Holy Spirit unction that they're being led for. And I got up in a, a meeting, <laughs> Robert, and I wrote on a whiteboard and I said, you know, the problem with conspiracies is they never end. They're like an infinite loop. They're a figure eight. They never come to a conclusion. They're like ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge. There's always one more YouTube video. There's always some more secret knowledge like the Gnostics had. And I began to draw this on a whiteboard and a man manifested mm. and he ran to the front and started screaming in the meeting and he started shouting, yeah, I got to tell you about all the things that are happening. And this demon popped and I, and I had to, and security ran up and I thought he and I were going to get in a wrestling match, but security took him off the stage. But I believe that there is a demon in the culture that the devil, he can't beat the church. So he joined it and he's going to try to distract it through conspiracies, through bad teaching. Those are some of the things I see coming, Robert. I think those are all really important. And I watched your video on the demon and conspiracy. I'm actually going to put that link for everybody in the description of this video so you can go there because it's really, really important. And I want to circle back to everything yeah. you said. I agree because it's all antichrist. The UFO is. agenda is antichrist. The it is. Uh, because it's like you say that what you think about what is the what is the illusion and the lie that they're talking to us about that they're seeding mm -hmm. this so they can come back one day and project into the sky or actual demons will manifest in the sky. Say, hey, we're the Alpha Centaurians. We seeded you into this planet a That's millennia right. ago, and you've messed up, but we love you, so now we're here to help you. <laughs> what is that? A savior in the sky returning from the clouds. It's anti-Christ. It's it the is. same with, um, um, what was the next one you mentioned? The, the climate change. Yep. And I love the insight you gave on the three Hebrew boys, because what yeah. is the threat? If we don't bend our knee to this religion of climate change, there is a fire of climate change coming that will <laughs> melt the icebergs. You'll be thrown in the fire if you don't bend your <laughs> knee to this. Well, here's my belief. One, I'm not smart enough to really understand potential science of this. Right, However, right. I have noticed something. It, it, it's always changing with global warming, and then it's climate change. And here's right. what I know. It's all attached to a spirit of fear. Come on, if it was from God mm. and he was saying, hey, you're the you're the Genesis 1, 26 through 28 dominion stewards of the planet. Let me give you wisdom on how to make some changes and clean things up from a That's place right. of we're going to solve this thing together. And That's there was right. hope in it and there was yeah. joy in it and there was faith filled yes. expectation in it. And there was a declaration of we're here to steward God's creation because God so created this creation. So and good, God, none of God is in it. None of wisdom is in it. None of joy yep. is in it. None of empowerment to God and his people are in it. It's all fear to get us yeah. to knuckle under. So I really appreciate you pointing that out. It's something that has been grieving my spirit. And you just, in a few minutes, explained it better than I've been able to bring that forth. Well, Robert, Robert, we know that climate change is real because we know it says in, in First Peter, right, that it says that the earth is going to melt with fervent heat. There so the go. bottom line is it's being preserved for a day that it's going to melt with fervent heat. So just for all of the people that say, wait, hold up. Climate change is real. The whole place is going to melt, but it's not going to be a little change in the atmosphere. The elements will melt. Come on. So come on. I just want to say it's real. That's beautiful. <laughs> and then finally, before I ask you to pray for everybody as you feel led of the spirit, yes, I sir. want to land for a minute on this word you're carrying for conspiracy. Yes, and sir. I want to encourage everybody to truly listen with ears of faith 
and truly see what Joseph is saying with eyes of faith. If you're reacting to that going, you don't get it. There are conspiracies. Well, you're, yeah. you're kind of manifesting. So be careful because <laughs> you may need the word because here you're listening to somebody <laughs> true. who absolutely believes there are conspiracies. Yes. And they are being proven true. And we need to yes. be aware of them. And Joseph yes. and I have talked about this. You may have heard us before. I always mm -hmm. say, look, if you're not aware that there's been a conspiracy since Genesis 3, you need to read your Bible. That's right. It's very clear that there's a come conspiracy on, of darkness trying to come against light, but it will fail. What Joseph is saying is don't get so caught up in the conspiracy theory and conspiracy pride and Gnosticism of the conspiracy. That's that right. It takes you out of your kingdom effectiveness. Because he on, remember, Robert. I have been believing and declaring for several years now the coming move of God, the coming moves of God, and all the different ones that are coming on all the different fronts. One of the things, there's two things that are going to mark all of the coming moves of God. One, a, a, re a remembering and re-embracing of the Holy Spirit of God. Come on. That a yes. holiness is going to be embraced as an invitation, an opportunity, yeah. and a strategy for us to walk in greater manifestations of power than ever before. And I'm going to release a whole word on that to you guys soon. It's one of the words I'm carrying for 24. I can't wait to hear that, Robert. It's so important. It came to me in worship, Joseph, when I was declaring yeah. holy, holy holy, holy is the holy. Lord God almighty and thought, wait, heaven's been giving us a cheat code. If we want to see more power, we need to embrace more holiness. It's holy, holy, holy. And, but anyways, he's been unpacking it to me for weeks and you'll get this. And everybody who knows me, <laughs> you'll laugh with me at this. In the shower this morning, he gave me more detailed words That's straight right. from his heart about this. God I speaks love, there. <laughs> he does. He loves the bathroom. He loves it. <laughs> he does. He loves it. I don't know if it's because his voice is that of many rushing waters. Or if or, it's not distracted. Yeah, I, I think that's it. I think I'm, I don't have a screen in the shower with me so it's just me and him come which on means he's a very gracious and merciful god to be in there with me <laughs> so one of the things that is going to mark this is the holiness of god but something else and this is i'm circling us back to this important yeah. word about the conspiracy demon one of the other things god has been telling me for several years now if we're going to see billions come into the kingdom Many of them aren't coming to church services, revival meetings, tent meetings. I want all of those and more. But one of the keys is the moves are going to be marked not only by his presence and power, but specifically by his personality. Wow. Because wow. people will be drawn like the woman at the well to the personality of God. The woman at the well was listening to a man, was willing to listen to a male Jewish rabbi. She's going in the middle of the day because she wants to avoid encounters because she knows what they say about her. She doesn't want to deal right. with it. And right. when she gets to the well in the middle of the day, I know that she has to be thinking, oh, gosh darn it. There's a guy there, and he's a Jew, and he's a rabbi, and he's going to lecture me, and he's going to point fingers at me. She ends up having this encounter with Jesus where she admits she is in adultery. In that moment, she is given a male Jewish rabbi in the culture of the day the legal right to stone her to death on the spot. Why would she be that vulnerable? Because of the wow. personality of God, because of the love of God, because of the kindness of God, because God's ability to see her, she, she truly is in the midst of the circumstances she is suffering. And That's yes, powerful. there are conspiracies going on. And yes, yeah. we must stand for righteousness and truth right. in the midst of those because we're God's solution here on earth. But we That's must it. do it in the character and nature of God. We must do it with love and honor and respect and without pride and without your, you don't get it and you don't get it. God gets it. Even if you understand all the details, you still only know in part. And if we're going to be really effective for the kingdom of God, and we are in oh, this God. season, we need to be embracing his presence, his power, his truth, his will, his word, his way, but also his personality. And this That's is the so last good. thing I want to encourage you with. And guys, you've been hearing me say this for over a year. Joseph, after, after actually for a couple of years now, after the 2020 yeah. election, one of the things sure. I, I, when I think we were well into 21, when we finally had a, a, a Mr. Biden, President Biden in office, the sure. Lord had me read the book of Daniel over and over and over again. Wow. And I'm waiting for this incredible prophetic revelatory download. And he shared things with me. But what he kept landing on again and again and again 
And I love how he makes the kingdom simple for me. He would highlight how Daniel spoke to Nebuchadnezzar. He would highlight how Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego spoke to Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, do you see you will have the most influence and impact when you stand for righteousness in the character and nature of the righteous one? So, so don't good. give place to conspiracy theories because it just it just grinds it grind it doesn't just wind you up it grinds you down into so this place good. of frustration, irritation, despair, anger and that's all rooted in fear so that you use the power of your tongue to curse not bless to speak death not life. God yeah. reprimanded me several years ago when I was complaining about one of my least favorite politicians. And he said, do not use the power of your tongue to curse and speak death. That's Bless powerful. and speak life and pray for, not against. And it is Good shifted. Robert. And while in many ways things have gotten darker, my expectation and hope of the light that I live in and operate from and how that light will break forth and shatter the darkness and the chaos and the confusion has only grown. So Amen. listen to what Joseph is saying about be aware of the conspiracies because we're here to deal with them, but don't give place to that demon of conspiracy that yeah. honestly winds you up and grinds you down in pride. And you'll know if you're angry that he said what he said, or if you know, you don't get it. He's another one who doesn't you know, get it. I you am don't telling get you, it. he gets it. <laughs> yeah, we but get it. We're we deep down in this stuff. Yeah. We're going to get it and we're going to become more and more effective for God by being aware of the darkness, the deep darkness, and yes, the conspiracies, but even more aware of how to inhabit the character, nature, presence, power, and personality of our God to see the darkness shattered and the chaos brought into order. So powerful, Robert. Robert, I am. Um... I so value your voice and uh, in my life and the ministry, and you just so eloquently put that together. I, you know, I, one of the things I'm very concerned about, and you know, it's, I hate, I was saying concern, 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 because it's, it's a real concern, <laughs> but you can talk this way when you have hope, you know, we're not trying to give you um, darkness with no light at the end of the tunnel. And the light at the end of the tunnel is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, we, I had this word and I've prayed through it and, and I'm, I'm at peace with it, but I've seen this word Decapolis for the last three years, meaning 10 cities. And then I saw 10 cities burning at the same time. And we've prophesied this over 10 years. And even with the border crisis, the way things are going, no matter what comes, and I, I need to say this because this is so vital, prophecy is never going to leave us hopeless. It's right. Jesus never leaves you hopeless and says, oh, no, it's not bad. It's worse. And, and we're not here to give you the thousand yard prophetic stare and tell you it's going to be really, really bad, you know. But there really is challenging times coming. But Jesus said in this world, you would have trouble, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And that's the cosmos. That's the public we're talking about, the Greek word cosmos. And I'm telling you right now, you and God are a majority. And I mean, it is time where we experience the light in Goshen. It's time where you're going to experience the, the coin in the fish's mouth. It's time you're going to experience the oil jars not failing. You're going to begin to experience more and more provision. You're going to experience five loaves and two fishes multiplying. You're going to see God do unbelievable things for you as you line up with him. And I want to say again, Exodus chapter 10, it was dark in Egypt, but it was absolutely light in Goshen. And that light was not man-made. That light was supernatural and it flooded through that palpable, dense, filthy darkness, a darkness that caused people to stay in a lockdown position for three days, morning, noon, and night. They were stuck in their homes. They wouldn't move. They wouldn't even barely speak to one another. When you look at the nuances and tenses of that scripture in Exodus 10, they wouldn't move. It was such a heavy darkness. It was demonic oppression, and they couldn't see their hand in front of their face. But you, in this culture where darkness is, Galatians 1.4, it says it is the will of God that you be delivered from this present evil age. So the good news is we're lining up with the will of God. No matter what comes next, the covenant of God doesn't change. The promises of God don't change. His economy works. The kingdom still works. And I got to tell you, there is a supernatural outpouring that I believe Robert's word really is for you, which is there's going to be spoils of war in 24 and the spoils are yours and you need to claim it. You need to, you need to start positioning yourself that way. I also want to say you need to start sowing if, if the Lord would so prompt you or in your heart, sow to Robert, sow to this broadcast. Why am I saying that? Because when you sow into a prophetic ministry like this one, 
And Robert's not asked me to say this. I feel the unction of the Spirit to say this. If you have an entity you're giving you want to do, if you want to sell, I'm telling you, I trust Robert Hodgkins. I trust this ministry. I believe the Spirit of the Lord will reward your dedication, your generosity. And why am I saying this? Because the way, the way things are going and where we're headed, if you begin to sow into God's economy, you are now making Him responsible for your future. And I'm telling you right now, if you're a partner with Robert, I want to say thank you. If you want to sow into Robert, I want to say thank you. This is my friend, and this man of God has such a voice to so many people. I've seen him minister. I've seen him weep over people. I've seen him weep over me. I've seen him step into the Spirit of the Lord. And I'm telling you, when you sow into the prophetic voice of God that is this broadcast, Robert's ministry, it will come back to you with friends. <laughs> it really will. It's going to come in the spirit of might. So I encourage you, if you're a partner here, I want to simply say thank you for standing with my friend. This is good soil, good ground, and I hope you do your very best and see this ministry take more ground in 2024. Amen. Joseph, thank you. That means the world to me. And I, I also want to say to the partners that are or have been partnering with us, I very quickly, I want to echo Please. that. Thank you. You oh. have sent us around the world through media, missions, yes. ministry. Thank you. And if you are interested, I will put a link here at the bottom or a, 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 a banner here at the bottom. Just go to roberthodgkin.com. Click the giving link. Please feel free to sow a one-time gift, but also please feel free to join our Go team and yes. become a monthly partner and help us go to the nations with the power, presence, and personality of God in so many different ways. And I'll also echo back. And I know for viewers, you're probably like, oh my gosh, come on, you guys. But this is important. Oh, no, stuff. it's important. Z Ministries is such oh. good ground. Uri and I partner with him. Robert Hodgkin oh. Ministries partners with them. When they have special wow. projects, we so believe in them. You we sow special do. gifts into them. Wow, we sow end of year yeah. honor gifts into them because this is also an incredible ministry to sow into a prophetic ministry, a media ministry, a world changing ministry. And if you partner with them, you are a part of what God is doing in this hour in the prophetic and around Hallelujah. the world. World. So Hallelujah. thank you guys so much, even for this. These types of moments are really important and they're really holy. And Amen. I also know you're here to receive as well as to give, and you all give so much. Amen. So I'm going to ask Joseph to yes, pray sir. for you as the Holy Spirit leads. So don't go anywhere. Don't tune out because Holy Spirit's going to come upon him and move through him and yes, he's going to pray for you. Love to. I just lift up my hand to everybody who's watching right now, and I begin to speak faith over you. I speak to somebody, you're dealing with issues in your organs, like your liver. There's things going on, and I begin to speak healing to that right now in Jesus' name. I command that you begin to feel that. You feel that. You feel the power of God moving inside you and changing you right now by the Spirit of the Lord. I begin to speak to these scenarios where I see two who once walked together. There was a broken conversation that happened, and now there's rumblings of a return and reuniting. And the Lord is saying, do it, but make sure you... It's very important. It's, it's kind of a tactical conversation where when you come back together, make sure you don't just go all in because you're going to end up repeating the same issue you did last time. This is a very specific word for somebody. And when you go and you meet with them, make sure it's godly. Make sure that you just walk it out properly and you do it appropriately. But just because you're coming back together doesn't mean you go all in. You're in danger of repeating. So if you go very slow, and here's the word for you, painfully slow, and you do it with integrity and character and love, God will make something great out of that process. I sense that for you. And now I see that there's so many people that are actually in turmoil. Some people have a, a normalcy bias right now. They're looking at the, the TV. They're looking at the computer. They're looking at their phones. They're, they're doom scrolling. You're looking at everything that's going on and saying, well, what can I do? It's stressful. I don't know what to say. And the Lord is saying, I need you to break out of that. I need you to break out of that. I need you to engage. I need you to get in prayer. I need you to engage with the spirit. You might not know what to do in the natural, but you know what? We're not totally natural beings. One third of us is Holy Ghost. And we need to begin to stand where we push back against these things and rise. And the Lord is calling the champion 
intercessors. He's calling some of you that are burnt stones. You were a part of things at a time. You stood for a season, but you got weary. You got burnt out. A supernatural wicked fatigue has come on some of you, and it's trying to stop you from terrorizing the kingdom of darkness. Because a ministry like Robert's and your ministry, listen to me, those who, who are attached to this, a ministry like this doesn't just push back darkness. It takes it a step further. This ministry punishes the darkness. Psalm 149, they punish the darkness. There's a punishing supernatural spiritual warfare that comes out of this ministry. And I'm telling you, you need to engage. And the Spirit of the Lord is waking you up. Now, I begin to speak peace to your heart. I speak peace to your mind. I say in Jesus' name, I see the Lord lifting off heavy burdens off people right now. The spirit of depression and anxiety that's tried to hold you is truly demonic in its origin. The Spirit of the Lord is lifting that off your life right now. He's making a way where there's been no way. He is opening up the good treasures and a double door to you right now. The Lord is providing. And I hear the Lord saying, watch what you're saying. Be very much a guard over the gate of your mouth. Watch over what you're saying. Be very intentional with your words right now because the enemy is a legalist looking for you to give permission for him to act. And if you begin to release the faith and the love of God and you keep speaking what you want it to be, how you see it in the word of God, you will not lose. You will not be taken down. The Lord is helping you. On a bad day, listen to me, you are anointed to be the best there is. A man or woman with a revelation is not at the mercy of a culture gone mad. You are God's vessel. You are God's emissary. You are anointed for this time. The things we're talking about are not meant to scare you. As Rick Renner says, they're meant to prepare you. And God will make it uh, such a, a powerful force in your life that your children will live. You will live. You will see, Psalm 27, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. In this next year, this next season of time, no matter what they sling at the world next, you're going to be okay. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I don't just mean in the sweet by and by. I mean in the natural, you're going to be okay. God is with you. Amen, a Robert. Amen. Amen. And I want you to post an agreement, taking a step into that prophetic word. Post right now in the comments, I am going to be okay. I am going right. to be okay. I That's am right. going to be okay. Come into agreement with that word for yes, you. When the prophet speaks it forth, you believe, you receive, and post, I am going to be okay. Yes. Joseph, thank you so much. I always love when we get to connect. And oh, Robert, I love you, brother. You're one of my favorite people. I'm so I glad we get to be together. I feel the same. I want to make sure everybody knows about your book, Servants of oh, Fire, wow. one of my favorites, all about angelic ministry, how to partner with and receive thank angelic you, ministry from a biblical perspective, which and I And thank love. you for your endorsement. Thank you for yeah. endorsing my book. Thank I you. I love Robert. endorsing your books. I oh. love your writing. I love your revelation. Breaking oh. Hell's Economy, a, a manual for end time success and prospering in every area. Joseph, wow. let them know where they can get your books and they can get more from you, including seeing you every day on Prophecy Live, your amazing broadcast. Share with them Thank where you. they can connect with you and get more from you. Thank you, Robert. Well, first of all, I got to get you on Prophecy Live. You got some words you got to release to our people. Uh, but let me just say that um, I, I, uh, you can get everything at josephz.com. I go live on all the social media platforms that offer live every weekday morning, Monday through Friday. And then we're also live Saturdays and Sundays now at 8 a.m. Colorado time. Plus, I really want to encourage you when you go to his website, not only join with him, partner with him, but sign up for his text chain. And I'm probably not describing it right, Joseph, but I know sure. I'm on it. And I'll get yep. a text when he's about to go live with a special word and I can jump on right then. And if I'm not That's available awesome, to man. jump on, then I have the link so I can go and then watch what prophetic words he brings. Joseph, I love you, my friend. I love you Can't too, Robert. Thank Can't you. wait till we work together next. Um, anything I can do to help along the way, all you ever have to do is ask. Thank, Thank you. you sir. God bless you. Um, and I will see you soon. Thank you. And very quickly, I want to say to everybody else watching, thank you so much. Thank you for making all of this possible. And I want you to know that we love you, we appreciate you, and we are here for you. Creating all this media and getting it out to you for free, whether it's our prophetic broadcasts like this or our supernatural mentoring series, we're here to equip, encourage, and empower you. And it's an incredible privilege. Thanks for being a part of this team. Thanks for being a part of this family. Thanks for being a part of this broadcast. I'll see you back here again soon. Ready for more? 
Go to roberthodgkin.com for more teachings, more resources, and more information about Robert Hodgkin Ministries and Men on the Front Lines.